How did the old song go? Uh oh, uh oh, WrestleMania. Well, uh oh, WrestleMania. That that's kind of <laughs> how I'm feeling uh, about the overall product for WrestleMania 28 right about now. Uh, yeah, you probably didn't expect this from me right away, but I am doing an immediate reaction to WrestleMania 28 because I got a lot to say about it, and I do want to cover it. And I have to say, overall, I did not like the show that much. I, I was not a huge fan of this particular WrestleMania. It actually sank beneath my expectations. Um, and I know I didn't give glowing praise for most of the card, but I did expect it to be a little bit better than this. I remember a few weeks ago, people I was talking to were throwing around the phrase that this was going to be the greatest WrestleMania of all time. And I don't think it was even remotely close to that. Like, not even... I, I don't even think it's debatable. But that's... I, I guess everything's debatable, but... Uh, yeah, I just wasn't a huge fan of the show, and I guess there's no better place to start than at the beginning. Uh, Daniel Bryan versus Sheamus for the World Heavyweight title, which... When that match happened and it was over, I knew it was like, I can't wait to do my video and talk about this because this is just too damn funny. I mean, this was Vince McMahon trolling. This was Vince McMahon's April Fool's joke on the IWC. I'm going to have Daniel Bryan lose the world title in the opening match in under 20 seconds, and it will be funny. But, you know, I told you. I, what did I say? The world title doesn't matter. Giving Sheamus the Royal Rumble win didn't matter. Uh, Daniel Bryan's world title reign didn't matter. The belt doesn't matter. Uh, there's no reason to have that belt. There's no reason to have uh, two world titles on the show. And now that you've bastardized this title to such an insane degree, it's time to unify the fucking belts. And I, I, you know, I kind of feel bad for Sheamus and Daniel Bryan. Last year they get bumped off the card, and this year... <laughs> They don't even get 30 seconds. The Funkasaurus gets more time than they do. Uh, which I'll get to that in a little bit, I guess. But it was just a really bad way to start off the show. And it really ruined the first hour. Uh, not that the first hour was that great. The first hour actually was horrendous, but I'll, I'll get into the rest later. But the fans were so clearly pissed off, which I, I was amazed Like when Daniel Bryan made his entrance and he came out. The uh, had, There were dozens of yes signs all over the place. I was like, wow, Daniel Bryan's really over. Um, and those people were clearly pissed off when that match went down the way it did. And they were chanting Daniel Bryan through the next, all, through all the matches up until Hell in a Cell. So, it, it was a really piss poor way to start off the show. Makes the world title look bad. Uh, again, second year in a row, it opens up WrestleMania. So, again, how much does that belt really mean? Um, it was, it was just a disaster. And Sheamus, way to go, buddy. You really stole the show. <laughs> <laughs> that interview he did kind of made me chuckle, but uh, I was like, yeah, you really went out there. And, uh, people will be talking about this match for a long time, but, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. The world title doesn't matter. Time to drop it. Unify the fucking belts. Nobody cares anymore, and I just, I, I hope that we're getting closer and closer to the ending the brand extension, because the brand extension just doesn't mean anything anymore, but... Uh, yeah, terrible opener. This has got to go down as one of the worst Mania openers ever. I remember when WrestleMania 2 opened up with Orndorff and Morocco, and that match, that match went to a double countout, and the fans chanted bullshit at that. And this was back in 86, and you're getting bullshit chants. And I said that that was the worst Mania opener of all time, just because it was such a stupid way to open up the show. What about this? I mean, this has got to be... and It's up there as one of the worst Mania openers of all time. So, uh... You know, not that you can't get away with doing, like, these 30-second matches like this, but not with... N not... <laughs> it, it just served no purpose. It was a storyline that nobody gave a shit about. And you know what? I They could have dropped this match altogether, and I probably wouldn't have noticed anyway. So maybe they just thought they were getting the unimportant match out of the way, which, again, enhances my point. you got to get rid of that second world title. But I, and this was just, just an exercise in uh, uselessness. Next up was the oh-so-exciting match, Kane versus Randy Orton. Um, this match sucked. I mean, there's there's no other way to get around it. Yeah, the finish was kind of cool, but if I was going to give points for cool spots, you know, if I judge things like that, Michael Bay would be the best filmmaker in Hollywood, you know? I mean, yeah, some of his action scenes look great, but his movies are terrible. And that's kind of how this was. Yeah, you got a cool finish, but I don't care about the characters. I don't care about the story. I don't care about the feud. I don't care who wins. And the match was really boring and really slow. I was actually shocked when I heard somebody told me that that match only went 10 minutes. I was like, really? I thought it was like 20 because it just wouldn't fucking end. It was just, it was, yeah, really boring match. And it was pretty much as, 
uh, pointless as most of us thought it would be. Uh, Kane won, which kind of surprised me. Uh, but again, I didn't really care either way. So yeah, I've I, I've given this match more attention than it deserves. Next. Next up was Cody Rhodes versus The Big Show for the Intercontinental title. A match that I admitted they built up well, but, it, you know, especially Cody's character. But I had this fear that he's like, but it just seems like that they're setting it up for Big Show to win the Intercontinental title. And sure enough, that's exactly what they did. <laughs> uh, so Cody's fresh new character that I was really digging kind of gets thrown to the wayside now. He was just used as a guy to lose to Big Show at WrestleMania because Big Show had to have a WrestleMania moment. And no, him winning the Intercontinental title is not a WrestleMania moment because nobody's going to remember that in three years. It's kind of like what I said about uh, the term legend is thrown around way too loosely. The term WrestleMania moment gets thrown around a little too loosely too, you know, like... Uh, picture of winning the IC title is not a WrestleMania moment, I'm sorry. It's, it's going to be forgotten uh, fairly quickly. And it's a shame that Cody couldn't walk away with the belt. I was hoping he would get DQ'd or something just to, you know, let him stay with the belt and just keep this thing rolling that he has, but... They didn't. Uh, the match itself, I guess, was okay, but it was, uh, you know, it, uh, it didn't really accomplish anything outside of giving Big Show a moment, which I didn't know that that was a necessity, but whatever. Moving on. The Divas match was next. The girls are hot. And that's all I have to say. So when the highlight of the first hour of WrestleMania was a segment with Mick Foley... Uh, one of the captains from Deadliest Catch and Santino Morella eating crab legs. Uh, that's the highlight of your first hour. We're, we're in deep trouble for Mania. So it was time for some saving. And next up, uh, shockingly early in the show, uh, was the Hell in a Cell match between The Undertaker and Triple H, which I have to say um, was very good. I really liked it. It was by far the best part of the show. Match of the night. Great stuff. Uh, great performances all around. Uh, I do have a few minor nitpicks, and it is, it's problems, it's kind of like some of my problems with Batman Begins, I do have problems with that movie, but it's mostly tiny little nitpicky shit, uh, and that's kind of what it is here, um, you know, I wish they'd used the cell more, I mean, I didn't expect anybody to fly off the cell Foley style, but I, I, I thought with that, you know, structure, they could do something dynamic with it, as far as a visual goes, or something, and that didn't happen, so, uh, they didn't use the cell much at all, actually, so I was a little disappointed with that. And I also feel like with Undertaker's streak and everything, the streak can never end. I mean, this, you know, some people are saying that this might be his last WrestleMania match. They were saying that last year, so, uh, you know, I'll believe it when I see it. But, um, you know, when he takes like 20 steel chair shots, two sledgehammer shots, a super kick and two pedigrees, and he kicks out of all of it. We're at a point right now where if the streak ever ends, it will probably be underwhelming and anticlimactic <laughs> because it's just like, what's going to beat him at Mania? Like, there's nothing you can do. You'd have to get a machine gun. And we, we're at that point where it's like, you have to take a gun, point it to his head, go bang, make it look like he got shot, and then pin him. That's the only way that <laughs> it's, gonna, it's going to believably come to an end. And... Uh, yeah, so the, I, I do feel like they went a little overboard with that. But other than that, I thought the match was very good. Um, and again, if I had to give like an MVP to this match, believe it or not, um, it would probably be Shawn Michaels as referee. I really liked his performance and his facial expressions and everything. I mean, can we give him like a Best Supporting Actor award or something? For, because he was really good in the match. And I, I gotta admit, when they... Uh, the one point in the match where I really thought, oh my god, the streak is over, was when uh, Shawn Michaels super kicked him and Triple H pedigreed him. I was like, oh my god, that was that was pretty cool. Um, I thought the point where uh, Shawn was going to stop the match and Undertaker locked him in Hell's Gate, I thought that was a really cool spot. Uh, I thought uh, the general direction and action and everything else in the match was just really well done. Uh, Taker and Triple H, they, uh, they went all out. Um, it was... It was a really violent... It wasn't a blood f fest that I thought it might be. It wasn't like the blood... Uh, they didn't blade or anything. I, although Triple H, I think, got busted open hard way. I don't remember. But uh, it was it was a very good match. And uh, like I said, it was the best part of the show. The streak continues, thank God. Uh, that needed to happen. Taker's 20-0 now. And I really liked the moment at the end where all three of them walked up the aisle and uh, they were holding up Triple H and they all stood on the stage together. I thought that was really cool. And, and it made for a nice visual. So, yeah, Hell in a Cell. Um, 
it was the best part of the show, without question. Great, great stuff. Okay, next up was Team Teddy Long versus Team Johnny Ace for control of both Raw and SmackDown, because I just cared about this match so much. Uh, Team Johnny Ace won. Yippee. I'll pretend like I care. Uh, I mean, what is there... What else is there to really say about this? It was a typical, boring, modern-day tag team formulaic crap. Uh, and they were fighting over something that I didn't care about. And there were a lot of bells and whistles, like Hornswoggle got involved, and the Bellas had to play a role. First of all, never give the Bellas microphones, okay? It, they're terrible. Standard barrier, really? I mean, they're terrible. Fucking terrible. Don't give them the mic. And Zack Ryder has got to be the most idiotic character in wrestling right now. It's like, okay, so this girl that clearly said in front of the world that she's using you said it on camera, and if you watch your own show that you're on, you'll see that, and you're hanging around with her, and then you're shocked that she cost you a WrestleMania match. I, uh, okay, you're, you're a moron. But, yeah, the match sucked. I mean, there's nothing else to really say about it. I didn't really care about it, and it, it was what it was. So at this point, we're six matches in, and I'm thinking, okay, we've had one great one and five shitty ones, and it's like, but that's okay, because I didn't really care about most of the undercard anyway. As long as the big matches, the big three deliver, it'll be okay, and Mania will get through, and it'll be fine. And then we got CM Punk and Chris Jericho, and first of all, I said in my preview that this match has to come before Hell in a Cell and Rock, uh, and Rock versus Cena because it will not be able to follow those matches. And when I saw them setting up for Hell in a Cell, I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> I was sitting there thinking, uh-oh, that's not good. That's too early. That's too early. And sure enough, you know, Jericho and Punk trying to follow a match that had 8,000 kickouts, it, it didn't really hold up that well. I was... Very disappointed in, in Punk and Jericho. It was, at best, okay. It was not the stellar Mania classic that I think a lot of us uh, thought it was going to be. Some people were telling me it was the match of the night, and I, I, I mean, good for you, but I, I, what match were you watching? Because I honestly, uh, the crowd was very, uh, the, the crowd was not into it much at all. It really slowed down uh, in the middle. It really got to be kind of a boring match, and I was really stunned by how, like, there was just no spark there. And I, I do feel it would have been better received had they not come after Hell in a Cell. I, I mean, trying to follow that was just impossible. But, uh, yeah, it was it was not a very good match. And I feel bad for Jericho because he's 0 for 3 on quality WrestleMania title matches. And Punk, this is really his first big Mania match that's dedicated to him. And it, it didn't go that well. Uh, it was, You know, I mean, not to say that the match was completely pointless. I like that... Jericho broke out the, the Lion Tamer. I did like some of the reversals. I thought the ending sequence was really good. But for the most part, it was just a really long and kind of boring match. And that really uh, really disappointed me because I, I, I was hoping for something much better out of those two. But what can you do? So after we got some filler with the Funkasaurus dancing with... Uh, Martin Lawrence's stunt double team, uh, we got to the main event, uh, John Cena versus The Rock. Now, first of all, I have to talk about the, uh, the live musical performances of Machine Gun Kelly, who once again <laughs> referred to Cena as an underdog. I don't know how Cena's an underdog when he wins all the time, but, you know, whatever. But, uh, yeah, the, he performed and then Flo Rida performed, and they were both awful. Now, I don't have a problem with musical performances at Mania as long as they're done well and they somehow contribute in a way. Or even just to play a guy to the ring, you know, fine, whatever. Um, so I won't trash it that heavily. It's just uh, I just didn't think they were that good. So, you know, there was that. Uh, so that happened. And then we got to the match. John Cena versus The Rock. The match, the match that has been built up for a year and was the main event to this show. Correctly given the main event spot. How did it go? Uh... It was good. It was a pretty good match. I did not think it was the Mania Classic that the WWE wanted it to be. Especially in the early minutes, I could kind of get the vibe that they really wanted this match to be Hogan and Rock. And it, it wasn't that. Because that match uh, started off hot and then only got more and more intense as the match progressed. And the fans reacted louder and louder and louder to it to the point that when Hulk Hogan hulked up on The Rock, that was like the most amazing thing ever and the crowd went, just went completely crazy. Uh, that didn't really have that. I didn't feel like the energy really 
built as the match went. It just kind of... Um, they kind of hit a plateau, and I felt like towards the end of the match, it, they kind of slowed down, and it really kind of petered off a little bit. Now, I, I do feel this match was too long. Uh, it, it could have done with about six, seven, maybe even ten minutes shaved off of it. it you know, give them, you know, condense their story, and uh, I, I think it would have been better. But overall... Um, you, you know, I, I sound like I'm nitpicking it to death. And again, I did enjoy the match. It was a good, fine main event match. I just don't think it was the, the classic that they wanted it to be. But overall, I did enjoy it. I, it was cool to kind of see uh, Cena and Rock do their trademark shit to each other, even though Cena's shtick I can't stand. But, you know, it was fun to see them interact and to see them uh, play off of each other a little bit. And now I do feel like, again, going into the match being too long, I do feel like they did gas, you know, they blew up. By the end of the match, they looked pretty gassed, uh, and they were kind of sucking wind there at the end. But um, again, it was a really good match, and I really liked the finish with Cena mocking Rock by doing the people's elbow, and then Rock just popped up and him with the rock bottom and won. And yes, I did mark out when Rock won because that's what I wanted. Uh, you know, again, conventional wisdom usually says that you know the guy in Cena's position would go over, but I hate him so much that. <laughs> It's just kind of like, fuck him, I don't care, rock, yay, rock. Uh, so maybe that's just me being a mark, I don't know. But uh, I did enjoy the match, and I do want to give that match credit. It was the second best match on the show. Second best match on an otherwise kind of lackluster WrestleMania. So, yeah, uh, overall, WrestleMania, you got one great match in the Hell in a Cell. I thought Cena and Rock was pretty good. Everything else can go to hell. Uh, everything else was just take it or leave it. And there was nothing on there that was truly, like, as bad as, say, Cole and Lawler from last year. There was no, like, you know, that'll be one of the worst matches in WrestleMania history type of deals. But it was just a very lackluster, uh, at times, dead show in the crowd. I, I was amazed at how dead they sounded at points. So, uh, yeah, WrestleMania 28 was kind of a disappointment. But you did get a really good Hell in a Cell match, and you did get a good main event in Rock and Cena. So... Uh, is it the greatest WrestleMania of all time? No. Uh, but it was what it was. And if I ever watch it again, I'll probably just watch those two matches again, and that'll be it. Okay, and those are my complete thoughts on WrestleMania 28. Uh, you know, if you like the show more than I did, uh, good for you. Awesome. Glad you had fun. Uh, I obviously wasn't a huge fan of the show, but it is what it is. If you hated the show and disliked it more than I did, then I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> but, uh, yeah... Now, a couple of announcements regarding what I'm going to be doing the next few weeks. Uh, my next couple of videos are going to be lockdown-centric. I'm probably going to do a preview of lockdown and a review of lockdown when it happens. So be on the lookout for those. But once I'm done with that, I'm done. You know, we're out of WrestleMania season. We're out of lockdown. Um, I want to do something. This is kind of inspired by something that True Slayer did because he started posting. Uh, he posted a movie review of John Carter. And he talked about uh, the DC comic books. And I kind of thought, you know, it'd be kind of cool if I did something a little outside of wrestling for a while. Especially since, you know, now that WrestleMania season's over, we can kind of catch our breaths and uh, kind of appreciate some other things. So I'm going to do a question and answer video. But the questions have to be non-wrestling related. You can ask me about my hobbies. You can ask me about my other interests outside of wrestling. You can ask me personal questions. I ask that you don't make it too disgusting or, or anything like that. But if, if I find the question to be too personal or too offensive, I just won't answer it. So I guess, you know, to each his own. Uh, as usual, just uh, send me a private message on my YouTube account and label it Q&A so I know what it is. And again non-wrestling related questions ask me anything you want outside of the realm of wrestling and we'll see how that goes and see if we have some fun with it and see if anybody actually gives a shit about what i have to say outside of wrestling but yeah wrestlemania season's over and that's all i got for now so uh have fun everybody and i'll see you all next week